Okay, this week we're doing lab five, which is tensiometers. And what we've done is we've set up two different scenarios. We have two tensiometers here in sand that has water added to it, but it's not saturated. So we have wet sand. And then we have two tensiometers in a bucket of water. So these are under saturated conditions. And what we're going to do is we're going to take readings from these two tensiometers using this tensimeter. You're going to need to calculate the centimeters of water in the soil by measuring the length L from the top of the water level to the bottom of the ceramic cup. So to measure your length L, we already measured the length of this one in the soil for you. But to get this one, you would take this to the bottom of the bucket because the bottom of the ceramic cup is sitting in the bucket on the bottom. So make sure this touches the bottom. Bring it up. And then you're going to read where the water level is and it looks to be about 99.2. Take your reading, we're going to use this needle to measure the pressure in the tensiometer. So you just place this right on top, the needle goes right through the, what is that, the rubber cap, and then you wait for the reading to stabilize. And this is in millibars. So here you would record minus, eight, minus 83, or negative 83, for the tensiometer in the sand. Then you're going to do the same thing over here for the saturated tensiometer. And you'll wait for the reading to stabilize. So this one's stabilizing at, oh no, it's going to go to 70, minus 70. So once you've measured your L and you've got your gauge readings, you'll use the, the equation in lab 5 to calculate H. So you would take your gauge reading in millibars, convert it to centimeters, and add that to your length L which is the length of the water column of the tensiometer. Now these tensiometers are automatic. So it's attached to a data logger that's taking a reading uh, every quarter of a second. And those readings are stored in memory and then average. And the data is brought up in a computer program. So what you get is you'll get a pressure reading and then you'll have the pressure reading that is already converted to centimeters of water for you up on the same screen. So what you're seeing here is this is tensiometer number one. So the pressure for number one is negative 1.31 and then converting that to centimeters you have negative 13.34 centimeters of water. Now for this one since we're measuring the actual pressure of the water, we have a positive pressure reading, which is 2.59. And converting that to centimeters, it's under about 26. It's still stabilizing, but it's under about 26 centimeters of water. And so it's important to pay attention to the negative and positive with these tensiometers, because that tells you the difference between an unsaturated and saturated zone. And one of the useful things with using these is you can think of the surface of this water as the water table. So as you rise or, or as you lift the tensiometer higher in the water, it's under less pressure. And you'll see that pressure, the pressure readings in the computer program change as you hold it here. The ceramic cup begins to stabilize. 
And you can sort of imagine that as being the water table drop. One of the unique things about the tintiometers is unlike piezometers, you can actually use these in unsaturated and saturated conditions. So you're able to tell where the water table is, and if the water table does drop below your tensiometer, you're still able to take readings of the water in the soil. Another thing you're going to want to do is do an actual measurement of the depths of water in the bucket. I can never get these to lock. And here it looks to be 28 centimeters. So now you can compare the centimeters of water that we've actually measured to the centimeters of water that you're getting from this tensiometer in the computer program. You can also compare it to the, to the centimeters of water that you calculate uh, for, this, for this tensiometer. And then since we lift this up, so the bottom of the cup is just below, or just above the blue line, and we wait for that to change and tell us the centimeters of water at this uh, depth. We're going to go ahead and measure that as well. So from the blue line to the top of the water is 12 centimeters. So when you calculate, when you calculate your centimeters of water here, and you read your centimeters of water from your computer program, they should be about the same as what we just measured.